<laughs> Someone just sent me a tweet saying that today should be really easy and then a tweet right after Oops, I forgot you are doing one day behind <laughs> So tomorrow is going to be really easy, not today Lantern fish. The seafloor is getting steeper. Maybe the slakies got carried this way. Oh, you are looking for the slakies. Yeah, that's true. A massive school of glowy lantern fish swims past. They must spawn quickly to reach such large numbers. Maybe exponentially quickly. It's like my algorithm's complexities. They are all exponential. <laughs> anyway, uh, you should model their growth rate to be sure. Although you know nothing about the specific species of lanternfish, you make some guesses about their attributes. Surely, each lanternfish creates a new lanternfish once every seven days. However, this process isn't necessarily synchronized between every lanternfish. One lanternfish might have two days, might have two days left until it creates, another might have four. So you can model each fish as a single number that represents the number of days until it creates a new lantern fish. Furthermore, you reason, a new lantern fish would surely need slightly longer before it's capable of producing more lantern fish, two more days for its first cycle. So suppose you have a lantern fish with an internal timer value of three. After another day, its internal timer would become two. Another day, its internal timer would reset to six and it would create a new lantern fish with internal timer of eight. Wait, when it's six that we... Okay, we are zero, and then when we are going around, we spawn. After another day, the first lantern fish would have an internal timer of five, and the second lantern fish would have an internal timer of seven. A lantern fish that creates a new fish resets its timer to six, not seven, because zero is included as a valid timer. The new lantern fish starts with an internal timer of eight and does not start counting down until next day. Realize what you're trying to do, the submarine automatically produce a list of the ages of several hundred nearby lantern fish, your puzzle input. For example, suppose you're giving the following list. Three, four, three, one, two. This is interesting. Okay. Simulating the fish over several days would proceed as follows. Each day a zero becomes a six, adds a new weight to the end of the list, while the other decreases by one. For example, after 18 days, there are a total of 26 fish. After 80 days, there would be this. Find a way to simulate lantern fish. How many lantern fish there would be after 80 days? We can do this. So let's get our input. Oh, our input simple, right? It's just, let me see my actual input just to get an idea. Okay, it's a big one, but it should be a single line. So let's get this input in here. And so as usual, let's call it fish because type in fish, life's too short to type in fish every time. And then we are going to map, right? So we get the input, we are going to split it by comma, and then we are going to convert each one to an integer. We need to just go in this loop several times. Do we want to use recursion? I think I want to put this in the module because I'm struggling to see how we can solve this only using reduce. We're going to do the recursion thing. So we're going to have a module recur, it receives the fish. I think we need two things as we recur, or maybe three things. We are going to use a mixture of body recursion and tail recursion because if we can make it harder, why not, right? For each fish here, so we are going to use recursion, right? So we are going to get the, let's call these fish, fishes. This accumulator here that we're going to start with an empty list, these are the children. We are going to get the top of the thing. If the top is zero, we are going to say, now I'm going to go back to six. I'm going to put six at the top, so I'm basically saying, hey, I'm getting the value at the top, I am putting it here because zero becomes six, and now I'm going to recur on the remaining of the fishes. Why does it sound so weird to say fishes? And then we need to add a new children, and the children starts at eight. So we are going to put one on top of the children. I start with zero. We are traversing the fishes. So if it's zero, we know this is a special case. So we want to handle it up front. We are going to convert it to a six. And we're going to say, hey, I have a new child here that we are going to put at the top of the children list. Why at the top? Could we do this? Could we put it at the end of the children list? Yes, we could do this because as we traverse, we want to put things at the end. But the issue with putting things at the end is that lists in Elixir, they are linked lists. So every time you put something at the end, you have to copy everything that is before and that's going to be expensive so we don't want to do that so we're going to put everything at the beginning as well and we're going to reverse it at the end otherwise we have a fish which we are going to do fish minus one and we don't add a new children let's try to see if we can do 
these with one liners because why not as long as we don't go over 80 columns i think we are good and then at the end the last case is when the list is empty so what we want to return here is the reverse of the children i know that this is a little bit tricky i'm mixing body recursion with the tail something that you would do in tail recursion we are changing the fishes one by one right and then at the end we return the reverse of the children which is the things we want to add if this is good we can say recursion so we can do this we can do fishes and then we can uh, do this and two three zero one this is good and then we can do io inspect and we can do another recursion and one two one six zero eight and this seems to be good this seems to be what we want we want to do 80 times right we want to get the fishes fishes we don't care about the iterator we get the fishes and then we are going to recur on the fishes and this is it zero wait 80 days we just want to sum right we want a length how many lantern fish we want the length five nine three four okay this is it let's do a pipeline because today is kind of poor on pipelines this is the solution for day one so let's do the things that we do the previous days we're going to have a new section this is part one this is set up this is the part where you're all tired of we are going to add kino as a dependency you all saw me do this at this point six times. Uh, so we are going to install Kino. And Kino is the thing that allows us to add input, implement a Pong multiplayer game, and do a bunch of other stuff. In the previous days, we were using a text area, but because this one seems to be a one-liner thing, we are going to use just an input. We need to assign the input to a variable, Kino input read is the same thing to read we read all of them the same the result is good i can get my actual input in here which i already got i can put it here execute this again and this should be my answer yes really straightforward with a single recursion suppose the entire fish live forever and have a limited food and space would they take over the entire ocean after 256 days, in the example above, there would be a total of... Okay, is this just going to be too big that we cannot... We will have to find some heuristic and say, hey, there is a new fish after this, and then we can need to come up with some rule. It reminds of that meme where it's like <laughs> how to draw and all, like the part one and part two, and like the first one is... Uh, I'm pretty sure that I just cannot run this, but we don't know until we try, right? <laughs> until we try and we run out of memory so 250 days is that it anyway uh, let's go back there 250 days let's do this and well for this small input three seconds four seconds five seconds solutions to make elixir faster i agree let's add another fishes this is shared how long can you push this in ruby i was able to do one million in three seconds i don't know this is what oh wow this is a really big number 26 27 billions okay do we see any pattern here i don't see any pattern here or maybe there is a pattern i was thinking hard the whole day and i have to think hard more each day a zero becomes a six and wait 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 wait. if i have this fish i kind of know how many this one is going to how many children it's going to have after 256 days right because it is i can do the math six right six five four three two one zero so after seven days it spawns a new one and seven days after that wait not seven and then so when this is seven this is eight based on the start fishes don't swim backwards so easier to count Oh, why am I reversing it? Yeah, I'm reversing it because I will get the same thing, but I only care about the amount of fish, right? Yeah, please tell me if I'm going in the right direction. If reversing is not required for the solution. Yes, it is not. Let me get this. What happens if I say that my initial number of fish is just three? Oh, they are all related, right? If I have one, the amount of children it's going to have, it's not related with the other numbers. Oh wow, this really grows really fast, even with an input of 3. I cannot brute force it, map with the ages as case. Wait, 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 we can break it in parts. Let's do 128. 
and this gives me this many no i cannot do that no i did not solve the small input yet i'm still stuck in the small i'm i'm thinking about which approach i'm going to use to to tackle this because if there is a mathematical formula for sure that tells me how many children it's going to have after some time at least is that hunch correct that there is a mathematical formula I'm, i think there is a mathematical form don't need math the only issue is that we store all fishes we have to keep track of the fishes without storing all of them. I mean, doing 1 million in 3 seconds is not important because we have to do 27 billion. So, you know, it's it, we're not going to brute force this. It's not important. We should not be trying to optimize. We should be trying to solve it. So you're telling that we don't need to find the math. What we need to do is to find... Hold on. This is going to be the biggest. And then this is less. This is less. This is less. Okay. The... I mean, this part, it makes sense. Okay. You store how many fish have X amount of days until they spawn? Oh, perfect. That's going to solve it. Thank you, Eric. Yes, we have fishes and then we just need to kind of rotate. Somebody said a ring buffer, something very equivalent to a ring buffer. So what we need to do is let's go put our input here. I'll eventually get the input back. What is it? Fishes. Fishes. So what we have is this. And what we want to restore is something like this. On day three, I have this. Like we want to say, look, on day three, I have two. And then on day four, I have one, something like that. I have one on day one, I have one on day two, I have two. And for all the other days, we are going to have that many. Let's create this initial map, fishes. Yeah, so those are the fishes, and then how do we call this? Let's call it a map, then. We want to reduce over this map, but we'll have to rebuild the map every time, right? Because every time we are shifting one, it feels like using a list would be better, honestly. Can we use frequencies? And that's going to be our initial input. So let's do, we don't care about this for now. Yes, that's a good starting point. And then we are going to do a list. So those are our frequencies. And we are going to do a list from the problem with the mathematical forms iteration of eight days and all following six days. If it was always the same cycle, it would be much easier. Yeah, I think for the mathematical formula, I would compute it for zero and then compute the differences until zero. Yes, that everybody's starting or rather that everybody's starting from eight or something like that. We are going to then go from 0 to 0, 1, 2, 3. Do you want to go from 0 to 8 or from 0 to 7? I think it's from 0 to 8, right? Because there are all positions in that. I think it's 0 to 8. Let's see if we can do it. So from 0 to 8, we are going to get the frequency for that number. Otherwise, we return 0. What was the input again? Input fishes. So three, four, three, one, two. So uh, zero, one, two, three, four, three, one, two. Right. So what I'm doing is that I created a list. So I'm going for suggestion. I created a list with the amount of fish. Those are the amounts. And now we are going to do a new recursion here. I have those amounts. When I'm here, so let's do this. We have the zero. I'm just going to do a very, we could have used tuples them. I'm just going to do, let's use a tuple. Okay. I think, yeah, I think I got it now. Day six, day seven, day eight. One iteration here, we are going to offset everything by kind of this. It's not this, but everything that was day zero go back to six. And day eight is also added by day zero, right? This is what we have. This is what we want, I believe. And let's convert this. Let's do a list to tuple. Did we add a tuple sum? I don't remember. We did. Then we are going to do this an X amount of days. Day eight is day zero. Why is it day zero? Because by definition... Oh, yay! Wait, wait. You're shifting. Nothing slides to day eight. We are going to... Let's do a couple rounds. Amounts. So we get this and now we are going to do recursion. Recur. On the amounts. Day eight is unused. It feels weird that day, day eight is unused. But don't we need to add also the amount we have on days? This is correct as well, right? We need to have to add day zero to day six. Anyway, this looks correct.
D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, D6, D7, D8. I removed the day, did I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, let's go easy, let's go easy. Recur is unused, you are right, it is unused. And then we have this. Oh, it's because recursion 2. We need to use the other module, I think. Wait, I'm sorry. Okay, this is what you have been telling me. I had nine elements in the tuple, didn't I? Wait, no. Okay. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, yes, that's what you have been telling me. At the end of two cycles, we have these, right? So one, two, one, six, zero, eight. One, two, one. So two here on one, right? Six here, zero, eight. I think this is it. So we are going to do this same thing, I believe. So we are going to get those amounts. We are going to do the recursion two, a amount of time. Then we are going to do tuple sum. You need, okay, so there is, some people are telling me that it's zero to seven and some are telling me that it's not zero to seven, it's zero to eight. Somebody has to be correct because this is definitely incorrect. Let's roll back here. Let's do by hand again a couple more times and see if we can spot what is wrong. We start with this and then we do recursion to recur. Whoever is in here, it starts with zero. And then here it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do need day eight, but it's weird because, well, the eight is starting with zero. And then, is this what we want? Nope, still just stumbling. No, this is not correct though. No, it wasn't it. Yeah, so let's do part by part, right? So we have, this is day zero, this is day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have all eight days here. Okay, so this is definitely wrong because, no, no, this is good. We have one here, it comes back to six. It's not coming back to six. Oh, yes. Those, uh, I don't like the name of those variables. They are confusing us. Yes, the variable names are horribly confusing and I don't know what to call it. Oh, it's because this is day six. We are in the position six of the tuple. It's offset. Yes, okay. I was putting it here and this is day five now because we offset by one. Anyway, two, five, six. This is that number, five, three, nine. And oh, I was not ready for this, uh, honestly. Yeah, so I can put my input now and we should be good. Thanks, Eric, for the initial suggestion on how to solve this. And a lot of people hinted at this as well. Eric was the one who made it tick for me, but definitely people were hinting at this. And it's this number. We can submit it and we are done.